Uriah, Ben Israel, Obadiah, Ben Israel. Okay, Shabbat Shalom, Deacon, Obadiah. Shabbat Shalom, Elder Uriah. Praise Yah, praise Yah. And again, Shabbat Shalom to um, all the brothers and sisters and elders and mothers that are present this evening with us mm -hmm. in the flesh. And uh, certainly Shabbat Shalom to all our viewers uh, that are tuned in uh, this evening, this Sabbath evening to keep Yahweh's feast of unleavened bread uh, that has been enjoined to us by our Elohim, Yahweh of hosts. And uh, we, we thank Yahweh for being here. We had a, a, a blessed Sabbath class earlier today. Um, it was entitled, uh, I think, Elohim, uh, uh, yeah, Power, of Yahweh. Power of Yahweh's, go ahead, say it again. The Power of Yahweh's Servant, Elisha, Part 4. Part 4. Yes, sir. The Power of Yahweh's Servant, Elisha, Part 4. So praise Yah. So we're here this evening. Uh, this is simply Yahweh's Feast of Unleavened Bread. This is what we're here to do. And again, uh, elders, good to see you here. And shout out, brother. And, and we, if we can't say it, if we don't say it enough, we're privileged and, and, and honored to be able to come before you, Yahweh's people, to, uh, to try to uh, read out of and teach out of the Holy Oracles. Uh, that were given to our fathers. Mm -hmm. So we're thankful for that. And we don't want to take it in any uh, light esteem. You know? We want to we want to be very careful of what we say and what we teach. And not only is how we walk before Yahweh's or before Yahweh. Because we know our people, many of them, uh, they're lost sheep. And uh, we said early, earlier than the Sabbath, that good shepherd, he'll go back and get that one that's been lost. And, and so we know that good shepherd is our Adam, and Yahshua HaMashiach. So he's the good shepherd. He is the uh, everything. And, uh, and I'll give you just a little bit of it right here about who we are as the teachers of the house of life. We are brothers dedicated to spreading the righteousness, that word, righteousness, the love, mercy, and forgiveness of our Father, Yahweh Elohim of hosts, by and through his son, Yahshua, the Messiah. Some may say Yahshua HaMashiach. Some may even have a different uh, pronunciation, uh, uh, iteration, right, Elohim? Yes, but nevertheless, we say Yahshua. We don't say we could say it, the Hashua. But nevertheless, it's Yahshua the Messiah, the Lamb of Yahweh, the King of Israel, the High Priest of Israel, and our Redeemer and Savior. Because you remember, you know that. Yahshua's name, whose name be blessed forever. We are here to teach and to proclaim the gospel of Yahshua, who magnified the law of Yahweh and made it righteous, made it perfect. And you'll see that up in Isaiah 47, I believe. But when it says our Redeemer and our Savior, in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy, 60, Deuteronomy 28, verse 68, Moshe, another servant, right? Uh, 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 another servant of Yahweh, who is faithful in all his house, right? He's prophesied that we will come into what? Egypt again in slave ships, on ships. And there we'll be sold as bondmen and bondwomen to our enemies, and there shall be no man to what? Buy us or to redeem us. See, you're not, he said, you're not going to have a kinsman redeemer to come and get you out of America, out of Central American country, out of the Caribbean lands. You're not going to have a kinsman or demon come and buy you out of South America, the America, Canada, you know, a parts up through the continent, in Turkey, Iran, right? Iraq, India. That's why you've been out people everywhere, scattered through the four corners. But there will be no man to redeem you. But Yahweh said, He ain't going to meet you like a man. So He sent His only begotten of a woman. 
Now he's a, he's your kinsman redeemer. Now he is the one that's going to do the redemption. He right. ain't coming to you like a man. He's more than a man at this point. He sits on the right hand of Elohim, right? So he is a, a, a God, priest, sacrifice, king, and many, many more. The government of Israel is on his shoulder. So that's our, our redemption is going to come through him. He's our redeemer. So that's already been done. But, you know, for us, we have to go through the process, you know. And they can write, we have to catch up to these things. Generations have to be born, etc., etc. So it's a blessing to be here. Mm -hmm. But since this is also a um, Sabbath, beginning the Feast of Unleavened Bread, so what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm going to turn it back over to Elder Uriah for our three class scriptural readings. And uh, we'll get it underway. Take it away. Hey, thank you, my elder. It's a pleasure, you know, to, for all of us to come before, you know, the most side. Yes, sir. With a joyful heart. Oh, now that's it right there. A joyful heart. Great, yeah. Great, Great job. Job once again. As usual, we're going to be starting um, in the book of Deuteronomy, um, chapter 6, verse 4 and 5, in this law book that he has given you know, to our forefathers. And they preserve these writings you know, for their children, children, children. And it falls unto this generation. So pray Yahweh for it. Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 4. Hear, O Israel. Yahweh or Elohim is one other name. And thou shalt love Yahweh thy Elohim with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. Praise Yahweh once again. Now let's go to the gospel of Matthew chapter 22. Yes, sir. And we're going to start at verse 34. Yes, sir. And where we can see clearly here. Mm -hmm. Where the Messiah, Yeshua, magnified the Shema. Yes, sir. Matthew, chapter 22, verse 34. But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silent, they were gathered together. He was a powerful brother. Verse 35. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Yeshua said unto him, Thou shalt love Yahweh thy Elohim with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hung all the law and the prophets. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now let's turn to Matthew chapter 18, verse 20. And this is what authorized us you know, to stand before the grace of throne. At the most high. Yeah. Verse 20. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. You see the power which we receive from the Messiah himself? Hmm. Give us all these authority. We have to be before the throne of the Most High. Now let's go over to Isaiah. Chapter 58, verses 13 and 14. It's still, you know, the Shabbat. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Peace of unleavened bread. So my LA is going to go more in depth, you know, in these um, Shabbats, you know, of the feast days. Praise Yahweh for those um, understandings that He has given unto us. Isaiah 58, verse 13. If thou turn away thy foot from the Shabbat, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, 
and call the Shabbat a delight, the holy of Yahweh, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. Then shalt thou delight thyself in Yahweh, and I will cause thee to ride up in thy places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob, thy father, from the mouth of Yahweh has spoken it. You know, praise God. Praise Yahweh, you know. And with that, my elder, and we know the heritage, you know, which the father of uh, restored for us all, you know, and we have to be patient, you know, continue, you know, to read and to walk in his word. Yes, sir. So we'll praise Yahweh for this. Uh, praise God. Now, at this time, I would like to hand it back over to the elder. Thank you, uh, Elder Uriah. Uh, like you said, this is Yahweh's past, uh, this is Yahweh's Sabbath. And as he read out of the, uh, the prophet Isaiah, sometimes we find ourselves speaking our own words. Sometimes our words can be what? Foolish words before Yahweh on his holy day. But we're supposed to be man, sober men and women. That's so right. we have to be able to control and to put away um, jesting and childish uh, communication. That's right. And I think you said with uh, bad communication, what? Uh, uh, corrupt, good corrupt good manners. So that's something we said about good manners before Yahweh. You don't present yourself in any kind of way. That's right. Right? Let it not be named among us. Right? Absolutely. But, but praise Yahweh for that. So now let's go ahead and get the authority. Um, you know, we know why we're in this week. We, we've shown uh, the authority for this ministry for the, just the three of us to be together. And and we all have come under what? And the body of Christ tonight, right? Mm -hmm. In this convocation. Because we, we, we are truly the tabernacle of Yahweh, right? So let's get the authority for this um, ha, uh, for this piece of unleavened bread. And sometimes um, it can be called Passover. But let's, let's go ahead and make it very clear uh, where that law comes from. Now we'll go to Exodus, to the book of Exodus, chapter 12. And if you would, my elder, uh, let's start at verse 1 uh, of Exodus. And uh, there's going to be a second Exodus, people. Hmm. That's good to refresh <laughs> and right. our brain. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And we say, we don't think about that, but it's written. There will be a second Exodus, Exodus of Israel uh, from the lands of our captivity. So we have to be, uh, this, this, this thing is not done. This, this, this is a, a narrative and a history, a prophetic history narrative in the making, right? So go ahead, uh, uh, you can start at verse 1. Exodus chapter 12, verse 1. And Yahweh spake unto Moshe and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of of months, it shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak you unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth month, tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an hour. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house Take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. And you shall keep it out until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take up the blood and strike it on the two side posts and the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night roast with fire and unleavened bread. And with bitter herb they shall eat it. Verse 9. Eat not of it raw nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire his head with his legs, 
and with the pertinence thereof. And you shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning you shall burn with fire. So yesterday, uh, earlier today, after we completed the Passover, mm -hmm. all that food, any of that food that was left over that we did not consume, we we discarded, we threw it away. Beverages of life. Uh, it was open, it was open, we had to pour it out. So we, we thank Yahweh for giving us that shadow of things to come that we can try to do and keep that Passover to the best of our ability in this particular captivity in this land. So we just, we just thank Yahweh for that. Verse 11. And thus shall you eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat in haste. It is Yah's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both men and beasts, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am Yahweh. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. So see that symbolism? We're under the blood of Yahshua HaMashiach. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of times, we, you just don't know, you've been taken out of here. You're under that blood, your house is under the blood. So, and this is, and, and what greater blood is that? Mm -hmm. The blood of the Messiah. So we can call on Yahweh in our distresses, we can call on him in our trials, and we know that he will hear us, he'll hear our prayers. Absolutely. You know, we know he hears our prayers, then we, we have to have faith that he will deliver. You know, so we have to trust. You know, like even you know, so we have to trust in Yahweh. And uh, thank you for our our Passover. Yahshua Praise Yah. Yeah. We're in the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 14. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and you shall keep it a feast to Yahweh throughout your generations. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Seven days shall you eat unleavened bread. Even the first day you shall put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eateth leaven, leaven bread, from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. And in the first day, there shall be an holy convocation. And in the seventh day, there shall be an holy convocation. To you, no manner of work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat, that only may be done of you. So, as we, we're trying to do this thing decent and all, you prove all things, right, did you? Right. So this is why we, this is a Sabbath, because the book says this is Sabbath, right? We prove it. We don't have to go through and play games. We read the book. If you're offended in the book, just get up and read it. <coughs> Close your Bible. It's not me. I didn't write it. Certainly, I couldn't have written it. Certainly, the elder couldn't have wrote it. And definitely, Deacon Obadiah is younger than three. He certainly, certainly could have wrote it. So we know we, these things are true. This is a memorial that Yahweh threw Moshe. And it's still here. Can you understand that? The miracle, thousands of years, the book is here. Later. And we are the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we're reading out of the book. Oh, man. Praise God. Praise God. Verse 17. And you shall observe the feast of unleavened bread. For in this self same day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall you observe this day in your generations by an ordinance forever. So what, just like the Passover, it's an ordinance forever. Passover is a law forever in your dwellings, not in your nation, in your dwellings. Not where you're living, but what? In your dwellings forever. It's not living bread. It's a law forever, an ordinance. Verse 18. In the first month, and... The fourteenth day of the month at even, you shall eat unleavened bread, 
until the one and twentieth day of the month at even. Seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses. For whosoever eateth that which is leaven, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he, whether he be a stranger or, or born in the land. You shall eat nothing leaven in all your habitation. Shall you eat and leaven bread? You shall eat and leaven bread. <laughs> then Moshe called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. For Yah way will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when we see it, the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, Yahweh will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. And you shall observe this thing for an ordinance to you or unto thee and to thy sons forever. And it shall come to pass when you be come to the land which Yahweh will give you according to as he had promised that you shall keep this service and it shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you what mean you by this service that you shall say it is the sacrifice of Yah's Passover who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses and the people bowed the head and worshipped. And the children of Israel went away and did as Yahweh had commanded Moshe and Aaron, so did they. Praise God. Praise, praise God. God. Um, praise praise God. God for that. Uh, Deacon, can you take us to Deuteronomy, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 16? Yes, I don't know how many of you feel, but when I came, Yahweh finally opened my eyes and I kept the, the Sabbath for the first time. I told my younger brother, I said, uh, he said, how you feel, man? What do you think about all that? I said, I said, Anthony, I feel like I, I've obeyed my Elohim or my God for the first time in my life. When I finally kept the first Sabbath. Praise yeah. You know, finally, I think I've obeyed. I've been obedient. This is the first time I've really been obedient in my life. Now I was a grown man at that time. So it, you know, praise God. So the, the blessed of the little children, the younger people who are getting this truth now. That, that's a blessing. Man. You don't have to walk through that. But you're gonna have your own different trials yeah. and different things. But I'm I'm glad uh, that uh, my younger ones don't have to go through uh, the confusion mm. of the uh, you know the confusion of not knowing the truth, you know? But praise y'all. So I'm going to turn on to, to Deacon uh, Obadiah, chapter 16, verse 1. Yes, sir. And if we're still getting that authority from the scriptures, right? That's the law book, the Torah. Deuteronomy, chapter 16, verse 1. Observe the month of Abed. And keep the Passover unto Yahweh thy Elohim. For in the month of Abib, Yahweh thy Elohim brought thee forth out of Egypt by night. Thou shalt therefore sacrifice the Passover unto Yahweh thy Elohim, of the flock and the herd, in the place which Yahweh shall choose to place his name there. Thou shalt eat no leavened bread with it. Seven days thou shalt eat unleavened bread therewith even the bread, the bread of affliction. For thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt in haste, that thou mayest remember the day when thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt all the days of thy life. And there shall be no leavened bread seen with thee in all thy coast seven days. Neither shall there anything, neither shall there anything of the flesh which thou sacrificed the first day 
at even, remain all night until the morning. Thou mayest not sacrifice the Passover within any of thy gates, which Yahweh thy Elohim giveth thee. But at the place which Yahweh thy Elohim shall choose to place his name in, there thou shalt sacrifice the Passover at even, at the going down of the sun, at the season that thou camest forth out of Egypt. And thou shalt roast and eat it in the place which Yahweh thy Elohim shall choose. And thou shalt turn in the morning and go into thy tents. Six days shalt thou eat unleavened bread, and on the seventh day it shall be a solemn assembly to Yahweh thy Elohim. Thou shalt do no work therein. Seven weeks thou shalt number unto thee. And we're gonna just read. Uh, so he, I'm sorry, uh, Jesus. So he covered you know, uh, the rest of that covers the rest of the feast days. So he's covered uh, up to um, the Passover and eleven bread. And uh, uh, when you go to Leviticus 23, yes, sir. And just, just start back to again. We're gonna go there uh, again. We're we're establishing the foundation of the law that provides that we keep the feast of unleavened bread. And so uh, starting verse um, one, and we're gonna give a quick summary, but let's take it, let's take it down there, my, uh, my dear. Yes, sir. Leviticus chapter 23, verse one. And Yahweh spake unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feast of Yahweh, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocation, even these are my feasts. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest, a holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of Yahweh in all your dwellings. These are the feasts of Yahweh, even holy convocations which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. In the fourteenth day of the first month at even is Yahweh's Passover. And on the fifteenth day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread unto Yahweh. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. In the first day you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. But you shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahweh seven days. In the seventh day is a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. And Yahweh spake unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When you become unto the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest of it, then you shall bring a sheep of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. And he shall wave the sheep before Yahweh to be accepted for you. On the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave him. And you shall offer that day when you wave the sheep and he lands without blemish of the first year for a burnt offering unto Yahweh. And the meal offering thereof shall be two tenth deals of fine flour mingled with oil, an offering made by fire unto Yahweh for a sweet savor. And the drink offering thereof shall be of wine, the fourth part of a hen. And ye shall eat neither bread nor parts of grain nor green ears until the selfsame day that you have brought an offering unto your Elohim. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generation in all your dwellings. Praise God, yeah. my brother. So we laid down the authority for us to be gathered here tonight. Because these the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread are ordinances given to the children of Israel to keep forever. Forever else. You, you, you follow me? So we thank Yahweh for that. And as we said in the earlier discussion with one of the elders, uh, we discussed it last night. All these feast days point to Yahshua. All of them. He fulfills them. So not only are the, the, the ordinance of the sacrifices fulfilled in Yahshua, mm -hmm. those sacrificial, right? The feast of uh, the, the sin offerings, the peace offerings, the trespass offerings, all those are. Uh, or in him. He is our peace offering to Yahweh. That's right. He is our sin offering before Yahweh. He is our transgression. When we transgress this law. All these things are before, the sins of error. Everything. Uh, we, we, you know, that, so that is, Yahshua is that sacrifice. It all points to him. But also, we already know that the elder David, he is the 
he is the priest also. Mm. So all these things point to him. So therefore, uh, Yahweh has fulfilled his word uh, from the very beginning in the book of Genesis when, he, when man and the woman uh, failed. So he told the woman, you know what, look, it will be enmity, enmity between your seed, right, mm -hmm. and, uh, and Israel's seed. And so we got to go, wait a minute. The, the woman's seed and the devil, that is. So what is this? You know, we understand that's speaking of the Mashiach. That's right. That he, Yahweh is going to send a redeemer to not only redeem his creation, but ultimately his people, right, from Satan. You know what I mean? This great darkness. This great dark Go ahead. I like that term. Yeah. The great darkness that the earth is in. Israel was supposed Israel was supposed to be that light. The Gentile, but our fathers struggled and struggled and struggled. And we, we used that term, they fell on the job. Uh, they Yahweh planted that uh vineyard. Uh right, he planted a vineyard. And let's go to Isaiah. He planted a vineyard. You know? And uh and so we, I think that uh, Isaiah 5, my mind's right, yeah, Isaiah 5, chapter 5, uh, Elder Uriah, let, let's, let, let's see what uh, Yahweh did when it comes to the nation of Israel and his prophet, this servant here, the power of Yah's servant in the Sabbath class, you know, here we, here we are again, Isaiah. We could put each name in there, right? Mm -hmm. When we talk about these stuff, we just place, we said Elisha, but we could put in, uh, uh, in this case, Isaiah, if he was on the Sabbath class. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that title is interchangeable with Yahweh's servants, the power of Yahweh's servants. Uh, so let's read in chapter 5, and we can understand why we need a redeemer as a nation. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 1. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 1. Now will I sing to my well beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. My well beloved have a vineyard in a very fruitful hill. And he fenced it and gathered out the stones thereof and planted it with the choice vine. Mm -hmm. and built a tower in the midst of it, and also made a wine press therein. And he looked that it should bring forth grapes, and it brought forth wild grapes. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem, and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard. What could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it. Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes. I now go to, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. Mm -hmm. I will take away the hedge thereof, and it shall be eaten up, and break down the wall thereof, and it shall be trodden down. Okay, now. And I will lay it waste, it shall not be pruned nor dig, but there shall come of briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that there rain no rain upon it. For the vineyards of Yahweh of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah is pleasant land. And he looked for judgment, but behold, oppression for righteousness, but behold, a pride. Voila. Mm -mm -mm. So Yahweh planted when he married Israel in Exodus 20, mm -hmm. right? In that marital proposal in Exodus 19, did you correct me if I'm wrong? He said, Well, I'm bringing forth, you know, if you, you're going to be, if you do that which is right, conditional covenant, mm -hmm. you keep my laws and my covenant, my laws and my statutes, you're going to be what? Uh, well, a, 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 a special people. Right. Yeah. Peculiar people, thank you, Elder. Above all nations, you know, holy people, a nation of priests. But now Yahweh's ultimately going to get that nation of priests now. But this is what the. So he planted that 
and he gave them the laws, he gave them the statutes, gave them everything they needed to bring forth good fruit unto the earth. Meat, as you would say, fit for sacrifice, for repentance, right? For the nations. The nations were supposed to see that light on the hill. This was Israel. That's right. There, so they worship the true and living of him. Baal can't compete. Baal ain't real. Nobody ain't real. And all the other gods of the nation worship, right? But Yahweh looked upon his vineyard. Uh, and the deacon brought out earlier, uh, when we talked about Judah, when we in the Sabbath class earlier today, you know, we found Jehoshaphat, I think it was, right? Uh, that particular was Jehoshaphat. Jerome. 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 Jerome uh, sin. Mm -hmm. He married Ahab's, you know, he had got caught up. And uh, he was doing certain things. He married Ahab's daughter. But it lets you know that Judah, right here, confirmed what we talked about earlier. Judah got caught up in it too. That's right. Right? So there was no righteousness. He looked for judgment, but he beheld only oppression. He didn't have it. So Yahweh had already had a provision. Okay, my people, I know they're not going to do this, but I've already slain a lamb from the foundation of the earth. Already got somebody that's going to bring forth that fruit. Let's go to John 15. Let's see who it is. The Gospel of John, Deacon. Let's find out. Now, we saw where Yahweh had planted a vineyard. Now, let's see who had the. All oh, things went to Yahshua. Sure. That's all we're saying. Start at verse 1, my brother. Yes, sir. We're in the Gospel of John, or Yohan, in chapter 15, verse 1. I am the true vine. And my father is the husband. Ah, bam! Now he got a vineyard. Right? We saw that by the prophet Isaiah. But then Yahshua declares, all right, let's get this thing rolling. I'm the true vine. I'm the true vine. And my father is the husband. Israel was planted. Right? And Israel was the wife. Right? But then we see what happened to our fathers. So Yahshua had to come through. It was already set up to the prophets, right? That's right. I'm the true vine. Mm -hmm. And my father is the husband. He's the planter. He's the farmer. Continue, my deacon. Yes, sir. Verse 2. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Deacon, didn't we discuss this very issue earlier? He did. Yes, sir. Come on, man. Why would say leading not to our own understanding? Yes, sir. Verse 3. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Hallelujah. Yes, yeah. Praise God. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you except you abide in me. You can't do nothing outside of Christ, the Messiah, Yeshua. You have to abide in him. And if you're doing the things the, those works, right, in his vineyard, guess what he's going to do? He said, if you're doing those works, uh, you're bearing fruit. I'm going to have to purge you so you can bring more fruit. See, sometimes you got to move from different places to do the things that God wants you to do so you can bring more fruit. But, as the brother said earlier, we were discussing, well, if it's been purged truly, then that existing branch should be bringing more fruit. Right? That's right. So now if the branch ain't bringing no more fruit, well, you already got a problem. That's not, they're not in Christ. It's just said, if it abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, so you got to be in the spirit. You got to be linked in. Right? No more can you except you abide in me. Go ahead, my people. Verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Mm. For without me, you can do nothing. You can do nothing. So you can fake the, you can fake things. A lot of people they faking that. But then you got, you got eyes. If Yahweh open your eyes, you can begin to see for yourself in the spiritual things. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of people can't see the spiritual discernment. Right? Mm -hmm. So if you got discernment, you give you that spirit, then you can see it. 
hey man, this ain't right. I got I, I can't be around you brothers no more. I can't be around you sisters no more. The spirit ain't something ain't right. I'm not. I'm not even grown. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's so true, man. But you know, Ella, I mean, yeah. you know, back in my days in high school, we used to do farming, right? Agri you know, agriculture, and reading the Bible, understanding the Bible. You know, the, it just showed to me what I was doing back then it was so important. Mm -hmm. You know, do especially a, a plant, you know, a lot of things. Tomatoes, you name it. But I have to purge it. I have to take away those things that come between, you know, the branches. See, right. And, you know, and um, to let you know that if you want that tree to thrive, you know, you have to purge it. You know, I know, you know, these things is explained in the book, and the book wasn't even before. Mm. I wasn't even born. Mm. So let me understand that, you know, our people, they know what they were doing. That's right. But they maybe couldn't, you know, explain it mm. or compare it to what is given in this book. Yeah. You know, but, you know, I, I would say to, you know, to everyone, take some time to get yourself involved in agri. I said agri, agriculture. It's very important because this Bible, I mean, come on, right. they're both right together. There you go. So right. Yeah, yeah. Let me ask you a question, Deacon. You know, so when that purging, so I get, what you're telling me is that you, you, you have to cut a little bit. You got to do something to that. Not branch. really, not really cut. If, if you have like this is the main branch, uh -huh. and you have the branches. Okay. Sometimes there's a little thing come in between. The, the, the main branch and uh, and the branch are okay. the same. Mm -hmm. The main, you know, so you have to take it out. You have to you have to destroy it right. because that's going to prevent the tree from growing healthy Ooh. and bear, you know, bear abundantly. That's right. Yeah. So those things I've learned, you know, in agri, never knew that these things were written in the Bible are used, you know, as a metaphor in in the book, mm -hmm. you know. So you have a plant, you prune the plant. You prune the plant. Yeah. You trim off from the plant. Yeah. Right. You have a canopy, the top of the plant is your canopy. Right. The light will only penetrate from so far from that canopy. So you have uh, branches that are further on the bottom, and they're not getting as much light. Sunlight. They're going to steal the food unnecessarily from those that are really thriving that are at the top, that are at the you know. So you would remove those so that more would be distributed to those that need. So put that in words. So as a in, as a as a person as a branch uh, in Christ, what does that mean to me? When Yahweh uh, through the Adonai prunes me. What does that mean to me? What is he saying? I, 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 it says I can bring more fruit mm -hmm. in this in works, right? The things that you may have about you that are unprofitable. I have to remove those things. Exactly. Yahweh has to remove those things. Yep. So that those things that will remain will be able to flourish. So you can flourish, so you can flourish. as an individual mm. in, in righteousness. That's right. Mm. Mm. Thank you. See, so praise God for that. Praise God. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Praise God. Hope everybody is, 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 is listening to that. Uh, but it's here. It's in the book. Thank you. And it goes so as far as sometimes you have some friends out there. That's what I'm saying. Break it on down. You have to cut them off. Break it, make it rain. High and low. Yeah. I say high and low. You know exactly what I mean. Right. High and low. Right. Bye and bye. Right. That's what he said. The things that are unprofitable to us, and that and you, you you specify, you might have some friends and people you're interacting, they're not profitable to you mm -hmm. in your growth. So Yahweh is going to prune that mm -hmm. from you. So that that light, more light can get in. See? That's so right. So you can grow more. Yeah, it depends. Because see, you can you can stagnate your growth. That's right. Uh, based off of who you're uh, around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just like the plant in the soil. You know, when the soil, when the plant wasn't bringing forth enough fruit, the machine was ready to tear it down. One of the men, the servant said, "Give me, let me dump it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Give me something. Let, let me fertilize that ground and let me turn it a little bit. Now it don't bring nothing. In. Then you cut it." Right. Right. That's showing Yahweh's mercy yeah. for us. Yeah. Right. He can yeah. look at you. See, that's why we can't judge another man or woman where they are. Mm -hmm. Because Yahweh may say, Yeah, you may look at him. He ain't good for nothing. She ain't good for nothing. That's not they're not bring forth anything. But Yahweh's merciful, right? Mm -hmm. So you Yahweh's looking yeah. at no, 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 the angel. Yahshua is intervening. Father. Uh, no, he's gonna be all right. Then you deal with him a little bit. But then 
when he came to that when he came to, to, to the fig tree. <laughs> he can't happen. And then that situation different. So so, so tell me this. When the master comes, you like we we are supposed to be instant in season and out of season. That's what right. I'm trying to tell you. That it was right. not it was not time for the fig to bring forth fruit. But he came to it and said, Where, where's your fruit? Curse be you from henceforth. We have right. no fruit. You should have had fruit when I came. But they said, Master, it's not time. No, so okay. it's not it's time when I'm on the set. Supposed to be in season. Ready. Right in season. Right in. Go ahead, yeah. bitch. This is why he's giving us time to prepare. Great. Man, see? Great Just be ready. Just get ready, Israel. In season and out of season. That's There's right. no excuse. We don't never know when the master is going to require something. Man, that, on you. That's a beautiful set, man. Great job. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's not just time to answer. Mm. Great job. Great job. Let's keep on going then. Yes, sir. Verse 6. If a man abides not in you. We're in the Gospel of John, right? Yes, sir. We're in the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 6. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. So he gives you an example in verse 6 of the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. So, if you don't want to be caught out there like that, because at this point, you are not profitable, right? Mm -hmm. So it says, cast them, they're withered, they become withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Okay. Praise yeah. God. Praise God. Verse 8. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue you in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Even as I, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Wait a minute. Your Christ ain't got no commandment, no law. Hey. Well, we know that's not true. He magnified the law and he gave his law. We discussed that earlier. That's right. In the Gospel of Matthew 5 and through 7. Mm. And then the other aspects of, of the Gospels. Mm. He gives law, he magnifies that law. Yes, sir. Verse 13. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. So we know he laid his life down for us, so Yahweh called us, and Yahshua called us a friend. Mm -hmm. It was a different relationship. Don't get it twisted now. Mm -hmm. He laid his life right down for us. He did, but for his seed that we discussed earlier, right? right, right. We're his seed. He got, in Isaiah 53, we said earlier, he got cut off. Mm -hmm. But it says in Isaiah 53, but when his soul was made a sacrifice, for us, right? He shall see his seed. Right. And if we endure, we, we are his seed. Mm. Right? He's going to be, I can't untold numbers mm. of nations mm. who have life, right? Yeah. Through what we talked about in Hebrews 2 today, of mm. uh, what that, uh, through his suffering, right. right? The captain, he's going to become the captain of our salvation through his what? Perfect. Suffering. Through his perfect, through his suffering. Hallelujah. Praise God. You can read a little more deep. Okay. Verse 15. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his master doeth. But I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my father, I have made known unto you. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you, that you love one another. See, praise God. And we could take it on. But I wanted to uh, just stop right there, just to show. This is a powerful chapter, the uh, yeah, Because you see both right here. You can see right there. From, from a servant mm -hmm. to a friend. Mm -hmm. mm. It's right now. Yeah. So that person has to be really close to you, mm -hmm. where you should. You share personal information. That's right. So there's growth, trustworthy. That's right. 
Amen. Mm. Amen. That's so that's, I love that term, that that, that intimacy that grow uh, to, to go from a servant to a friend. Mm. And, and see, even with this ministry, it says, now you when you've been purged, it's like you go and you bring forth fruit. Now the key is that your the, 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 the goal is and the hope is is that your fruit should remain. All the works that you do in the vineyard and with the true vine, you know, those works should retain. It mm -hmm. should it shouldn't just be when they're tested, go blow up, mm -hmm. burn up real quick, right? So uh, now a lot of us are going through changes. So uh, in this situation, but that, that unleavened bread. Uh, it speaks about something that who who are we? So, Elder, let's let's stop there. Elder, let's go to First Corinthians. Let's get to the chase. Let's go to First Corinthians or something. And uh, excuse me, First Corinthians chapter five. Uh, First Corinthians chapter five, and you can begin at verse one, Elder Uriah. First Corinthians chapter five, verse one. Verse one. It is reported commonly. Oh, I'm 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 sorry. Hold on, did I give you the right name? I, I think I'm in I'm in separate. Hold on, hold on, stay where you are. Let me just make sure I'm in the right place here. I apologize, dude. Uh, let me make sure I'm in the uh, you know what I want to make sure? Uh, let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 5. I'm sorry, everyone. We were there? I was in 2 Corinthians. Thank you. So, just go to 1 Corinthians. My bad. 1 Corinthians. Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you and such fornication as it not so much as name among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. So they were doing things right then in the church, Israel. That's, that's in the way. Y'all doing stuff that the Gentiles only want to get into. You don't got with your father's wife. Okay, let's keep that in mind. That's what Paul is addressing these things. Hmm. Verse 2, and you are puffed up and have not wrought upon that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. It's communicated. That's right. See, see, when you, how can I say it, Deacon? The elder, you, you, you're in a body, in a, in a particular church or whatever it may be, and you see these wicked things going on in the body. Now what are you supposed to do with it? What are you, are you, you supposed to ignore it? Or Eli, right? yeah. what, what, what did Eli ever do? What did Eli do? Eli saw it. Well, he, he rebuked his son. And Eli was a priest, right? Eli was a priest. He yeah. rebuked his son. But um, that's as far as he went. What, what, what were those sons doing so everybody can understand? Well, the sons were, were robbing and sacrifices. Uh, they were uh, dishonoring Yahweh's sacrifices. That's they were right. taking the flesh before he was actually born. They, and not only that, they were laying with the women at the altar. That's right. Mm -hmm. They were carrying on with all type of demons. They made Yahweh's law grievous to the people. Mm -hmm. So now you said it. So Eli, he, he rebuked them, but he didn't remove them. He didn't really deal with them in a certain way. Okay. So what happened to Eli? What, what was the, the situation with Eli? Then? What happened? Uh, his son ended up being killed. Yeah. Yahweh said, because you love the boys more than you love me. Say that again. Yahweh said, you love them boys more than you love me. Mm -hmm. So he killed them sons. The ark got taken. Eli died. You know, and uh, yeah. And and and, uh, and and his seed no longer were able to be in the priesthood. Cut him off the priesthood. Praise, God. Praise God. Good summary. Way to break it down. So when we're in situations, we have to be mindful we cannot abide in the presence of wickedness. It's crazy stuff that's going on around us. And you sit in these churches, right? Or these places, wherever you may be. That's right. So if you are not able to go to someone and say, hey, this ain't right. Are you going to check them? Are you going to address this stuff that's going on? <laughs> I don't want to get... I said, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. 
Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. So you know what happens? Yahweh gets in that business. That's right. Yeah, don't worry, Yahweh will get in. Yeah. Yeah. Yahweh get in. You see what Yahweh down? He cut the thing down. Purge. He'll purge. But that's not the purge we're talking about. I this know. is a purge. Like you said, it's the purge. Not what the Mashiach talked mm -hmm. about. This is a purge. Look, I'm gonna take my people down here. Yeah. But now sometimes the people they want to hear those smooth things. They like hearing what they hear. Right? Yes, sir. Now you think it's people. Some other people think, well, they like this. You stay right there. That's stay, right. Yeah. You stay right there with them now. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's let's see. So he's saying they should have been excommunicated, which you just read in verse two. That's right. right? So they a person like that should be dealt with. Let's go ahead and find out how how, how this thing be dealt with. We're in First Corinthians chapter five, verse three. For I verily, as absent in body, but present in spirit, have judged already as though I were present concerning him that had so done this deed. The specific, the specific infraction, transgression that Paul was talking about. Paul said, "I'm already there in the spirit." And now we can see that when we're reading about Elisha, when he saw what Gehazi had did mm. with Nathan, like Naaman, what's that? Naaman. When he came back, where you been? Oh, I, 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 I ain't been nowhere. No, no, I saw what you did. I was there with you. I saw what everything you did in the spirit. Now we showed it to him. Paul not accountable for these churches? Is Paul not accountable? He's not sent to the Gentiles. Was he not sent to the Gentiles ever? Yeah. Was he, he accountable? Was, he was sent to the Gentiles. And he was sent to them. Yeah. So the Spirit's on him. That's right. Is he not, is he not one of, uh, is he not an apostle called by Yahshua himself? Yes. So that Spirit's upon him. Mm -hmm. That first, that first part, the first fruits of that Spirit That's right. put upon them. So yes, y'all would let him see it. Hey, I, would, I'm, I, I already know what's going on. How do we know what to correct? Come on, man. That's spirit. Now he gave me those things. Okay. Verse 4. In the name of our Adonai, Yeshua HaMashiach, when you are gathered together, and my spirit with the power of our Adonai, Yeshua HaMashiach, to deliver such one, such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the days of the Adonai, Yeshua. Let, let, let Yahweh, we're going to let Satan deal with him. Mm -hmm. He got to get himself together. Mm -hmm. See, Satan got a job to me. It's not just what you think. Remember, he said, the book tells us you're talking about angels and different things. You don't have no understanding of what their job description is. Mm -hmm. That's right. They got a job description. You know that, don't you? Mm -hmm. And the, 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 the rock and roll guys made a, a movie, uh, uh, made a song uh, called Lucifer. Remember that song? Mm -hmm. uh, what was the group? Uh, Rolling Stone? Mm -hmm. They had one, a popular song called uh, Bob Lucifer. He said, and he says, uh, he says my name, guess my name. You know, you, you know I'm Lucifer. I mean, they, they, they sing it popular. Mm -hmm. But he said, but, but he said, but what's ailing you and what's bothering you is the nature of my game. Right. See? And they have, see? Sometimes you gotta listen to things in the world and you'll hear something. You say, man, they're telling you uh, something spiritual. This is how you roll it. Mm -hmm. You think it's, you just having bad luck. No, it ain't about that. You got something going on. And you don't know how, how y'all is dealing with this thing. Mm -hmm. Is it, are you being tested because you're trying to walk in righteousness? Or are you just reaping what you sow in wickedness? Mm -hmm. Right? So sometimes we, if y'all would give us a spirit, to, uh, to, be, to get sobered up, right. then we can look at it and say, man, uh, you hear this truth? This is my problem. I need to repent. Right? Because that unleavened, that unleavened bread represents what? Sin. So let's continue, Deacon. Verse 6. Your glory is not good. Know you not that a little leaven leaven the whole lump. You have a body and you sit up there under the body of Christ and you allow a little something to get away. Mm -hmm. A little left, a little wickedness in the camp, a little wickedness in the church, a little wickedness in the body, a little wickedness, a little sin in the temple, uh, in the keepers of the house of life, leavens it the whole lump. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it has to be somebody among the three of us to keep us accountable. Mm -hmm. If we right. get a little beside ourselves. That's right. You see? But if you're around a situation where 
You don't even want to follow what Paul says about the law, like we discussed earlier. Hey, if somebody wronged me, let's take it before. The king. No, no, no. I'm going to make all the decisions around this camp, as they say. All right? Who corrected me? Am I correct you? So now you're self righteous, and you got a bunch of self righteous people there with you. That's right. And now I'm doing it. I'm over here fornicating. I don't want to let my fornication go. I'm stealing. Well, I know he's stealing the same. He's stealing. I don't want to mess up his house with stealing. He's fornicating. She's fornicating. Got them in the back doing something that they shouldn't be doing. So now, what? Who can stop them? You live in a glass house. You're scared to say something. Mm -hmm. Hypocrites. Mm -hmm. So we got to be careful. Somebody got to hold you accountable. You got to hold your children accountable, don't you? That's right. You somebody, know, somebody got to do it. You know, like my elder, you know, if you don't say anything or you don't do anything, then you become an accessory to the crime. Go ahead, Mike. Go ahead, Ellen. And you're going to be found guilty. Mm, right? Yeah, so you have to say something. I mean, look at it. We all, <laughs> this body, each and every one, accountable for everything around this table. Okay. Yeah. If one get out of line, oh, trust me. What have the brothers going to say to me? Hey, hey, come on. You know, do something about it. And if I don't do something about it, they're going to do something about it. Okay. Amen. You know, so we Amen. praise God with the body, man. You're right. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up, though, because you enable people. Mm -hmm. you're, you're accessory to it. And you enable them to keep on doing what they're doing. Yeah. You got to nip it in the bud. What they say, nip it, that, that's true and purge it. Nip it in the bud. Mm. These are agricultural terms. Nip it in the bud. You can't put you raising a child and you ain't did nothing to this child. Now they get up to a teenager and now, and now you're trying to be a mom and a dad. Hey man, you don't made some mistakes along the way. Now you might can take you might can you might can resolve it, but it's gonna put you through more stress and strain. If you had a, did it right, nip it in the bud. Pop them on the behind a little bit. Sat down with them and and, and check them immediately. Mm -hmm. We don't do that. Open rebuke is better oh. than secret love. Say that again. Right. Say that again. They said open rebuke is better than secret love. That's secret love. Mm -hmm. I don't want to offend you. Well, um, Yahshua or well, Yahweh is not a respectful person. That right? Mm -hmm. I mean, so you, so you, you don't want to offend. But it says if a man can does not offend him with his with, 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 with his mouth, well, that's a perfect man. That's a perfect man, that's right there. The truth hurts. The truth hurts. Yeah. I mean, it I, hurts. I, you know, you can dress it up mm -hmm. and, and, and nice it up or whatever, but, but the truth hurts. It and does hurt. Feel pain. Exactly. I don't want to offend you, but I'm going to let you get thrown in the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I didn't offend me. Right. But they getting that judgment. Y'all wake up judging you. Mm -hmm. You didn't do this, you didn't do that. Why'd I put you on the platform? I gave you a ministry. I did this, this, and this, and this. But you let your people go on straight down to the pit. What did Saul say? The people you gave me, uh, uh, <laughs> they, 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 they went in on They did. They did. They did. They did. But you were authority. You were the yeah. you, want all, you want all the acute of authority. Right. Yeah. You want that. You want you love being called by a title. Yeah. You love the title, don't you? Yeah, I want that respect. But now when it comes down to the, oh, hey, they did that. She did that. Mm -hmm. Why, you, you try to pull, pull them in? They ain't responsible for all that. Because you are. You are. Who else is responsible? Mm -hmm. Pastor? Elder? Deacon? Rev Reverend? Reverend? You can't even say Reverend. Reverend? What Reverend? The Honorable Reverend? Mm -hmm. Whatever. So who else is responsible? You put your now Yahweh called you to do a thing. So be it. Mm -hmm. You always stumble. You can make a mistake, but the difference Yahweh called you, and when, like you said, you're going to be willing to what that open rebuke, and somebody can come and tell you. You say, "Well, brother, I didn't see it that way," but Yahweh may take you back. It might take a minute for you to sit there and go and pray about it, mm -hmm. and reflect, meditate. You know, I was doing that. The Spirit did. Yeah, I did. I did. I was wrong. No, David said. Oh, and how? And how? And, and uh, the prophet came to him 
he had to he had to be nice <laughs> and careful of that. The problem the way that he approached it. He sure did. But when he, when when the deal came down, he said, "Man, who is that man? Kill him." He said, right. "No, he said you that man." Oh, oh, oh. So he, 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 he didn't hide it from him. This is love. That's right. Love, it is yeah. love. It, that's love. Tell me what I'm doing wrong. Don't love me to death. <laughs> I love you. Love me to death, then. Yeah. Then no, tell me correctly, mm -hmm. and I just went off the cliff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, keep that love. Somebody come and tell me. Now I might get a little. Okay, get pumped up. Your friends like those. They don't need that. <laughs> I don't know that's that. Who needs the enemy? Oh yeah, they wait for you to fall. Absolutely. We're in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 7. Purge out, therefore, the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, as you are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Man, even Christ, everything back in the book. He's our Passover. Right? Purge out that, get rid of that old sin. That thing that's been hindering you for too long. We're in the new year, right? Now let that go. Let those things go. Uh, as you say, get it purged. Let, 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 let allow the Holy Spirit to purge that. Uh, uh, to come in. You know, what you said. Put that thing, nip it, cut it out so you can bring forth some fruit. So you can bring so forth some fruit, repent uh, uh, meat for what? Repentance. You go out there and talk to somebody else to hear his word. But you got to grow. You can't just be drinking milk and you 80 years old, right? You ain't grown yet. What you hear 80 years old, you ain't doing nothing, doing the same thing? Mm. Now we go back 70 years old. Mm. 60, 50. Mm. Hey, you ain't, come on now. You can't talk to nobody. They can't see the light in you. Right? We discussed that earlier, right? Let your light so shine among men. Okay. What's your light? Mm. You said we in a period of gross darkness, right, Deacon? That's right. Come on, it's, hey man, let's get into the light. Now, if you want to continue in darkness, I have to do with that. But now, there's some consequences and repercussions. Now, if you can handle the repercussions and consequences, hmm. hey, I can't. You better man the woman in here. I, I got to let that go. I got to hmm. do the best I can. Right? Yep. Go ahead, though. Verse 8. Therefore, let us keep the peace, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of uh, sincerity and truth. I wrote unto you in an epistle, not to accompany with fornicators, right. yet not all together with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extraordinaries, or the uh, idolaters, for then must be needs go out of the world. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, or a covetous, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or, a, or an extortioner, with such an one, no, not to eat. Didn't we say earlier you might have to cut loose certain things? Yeah. There's some people in the world you gotta just let go. I'm gotta sorry. Let go. Yeah, well, I'm trying to help. No, you can't help them. If y'all, if it, if they're hindering you, how you helping them? Does that make sense? Yeah. If you you being pulled down, but you gotta save yourself. That's right. When you're in the airplane. When they have distress, they teach you, right? You put your mask on first. Right? Then you can help the baby. You can say, if you blank out, who's going to put a mask on your baby on the plane? <laughs> yeah, right? right? You don't fell out. Your child, everybody. Your baby didn't survive. But you try to do things back. Follow the rules. But they, they'll tell you that's selfish, y'all. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Bring it up. They say it's so, what? It, it, you know, that's selfish. That's selfish. So, I mean, but, but there's also a thing called perspective. See? Now, in context. You, salvation, you gotta put it in context. You know about being selfish. You want to be selfish. But you want salvation. I was told, how can you not be selfish to receive, to receive salvation? He says, what, 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 what height would, he said, what would I allow to, to, to separate? Me between, between me and the love of God. Come on now, brother. Now, at some point, now, now what are you going to give up for that? 
See, that 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 See, part that is not about being selfish. But the point of the matter is, you're going to have to make some hard decisions. He said, "What will I allow to separate? Neither height nor depth. Well, there's going to be a whole lot in between that. That's right. See, how do you deal with that and reconcile that? If in your mind you're willing to let this or that get in the way, come on now. You have to already have your mind made up that oh no, I'm not. What did Joshua say? As for me and my household, we gonna serve. Serve Lord Yahshua. We are gonna serve Yahweh. See? You do what you gotta do. Don't you do what you wanna do. You know, if you wanna do that, but we gonna serve Yahweh. I love you, but I can't no, pursue that. Selfish. That is that selfish? No, that's not selfish. That's common. That's good understand. That's wisdom. That's yeah. wisdom, young people. But she's my girlfriend. She's my good friend. And I said, well, yeah, I'll let this time for you to move on. Mm. Right. That's right. It's time. Y'all have grown. Mm. Apart, it's time to move on. Now you got a different destiny. Now he's calling you here. He's calling her there. Who knows? Y'all might converge down the line. But for right now, you better you better heed the word of Yah and do what Yahweh's calling you to do, young men and women. You feel me? But this, when we're young, we don't we, we think that oh, it's my best. But you see them, they ain't too much stuff. Right. They in them streets real hard, real hard in the streets in the world. But they may not be. So, but they may be doing other things that are just as bad, but they may not, may not rise to criminal, criminality, but, but it's criminal before Yahweh. That's right. Right? The legal system may not be criminal, what your friends do, under the law of man, but under the law of Yahweh. Oh, you're a sinner, you're transgressing. You gotta do that. So this is, this is so deep. But uh, yeah. thank you for, for that perspective, El Deacon. Yeah. That was it, that's what we needed to hear. You know, sometimes, um, Elder uh, and Deacon, you know, separation sometimes is going to cause heartache. Oh, yeah. You know, and But sometimes, you know, both of you are going in, in, in that same direction. Both of you guys are thinking the same way, you know, which is, most of the time, is the incorrect way. And sometimes, you know, that's where the most I come to the place. Separate you guys. So you have to heed sometimes to that separation. He wants you to walk righteously so your friend can see what righteous is all about. Then that friend will gravitate a different way. Oh, no, no. Let's stop the stealing. Let's stop in, you know, doing all those things that are righteous before the prayer. Mm. But sometimes you do have to separate first mm. for the other party to say, you know something, let's deviate from this direction. Amen. Very Amen. Where is y'all? Continue. Verse 12. For what am I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not to judge them that are within, but them that are without Elohim judge it. Therefore put away from among yourselves that wicked person. Come right back to that person that should be excommunicated. Mm -hmm. So, so therefore, when you're in the body, Yahweh in these churches, as we call them, right? He's expecting them to do the things that are right, right? Take care of that business. Mm -hmm. They're out of line, you gotta take, you gotta address it. You can't wait, address it. So if they're not addressing it, what does it do? It infects the whole congregation. That's right. Everybody's infected based upon the foolishness that you allow one X and Y to do. Now everybody don't got infected in some way or another. Mm -hmm. Some are being vexed up in there. They can't, they can't take it. Mm -hmm. now they acting like a madhouse. Let me say something. Elder, you correct me, but this is my experience. I don't see certain things done coming into truth and calling myself so-called Israelite or Hebrew, the term that we are. That's who we are. We're Hebrews. We're Israel. But when you come into the... I've seen certain things done in, in, in this world that I never would see. I never saw in the Christian church. So I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. The stuff I've seen as a Hebrew, I ain't never seen our people who act like that in the Christian church. They they, they have more respect among uh, in Christianity than they have coming and keeping Yahweh Shabbat from. And they're going to talk about somebody else a Christian. Ain't nobody fighting and, and, and just carrying on in the church like that. They, no, they don't let you do all that. No, they make some places, yeah. But I haven't seen it. When I was a young man, we had a, our people had a, some a decency about themselves. You come in here for a couple of hours, you do right up here. 
you don't do what you're going to do. But when you up in, you ain't got enough respect to sanctify the place you at among the brothers and sisters. How you going to do that, Ellen? Man. Man, Ellen. Ellen. Like we haven't seen. What, 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 I'm sorry, I'm home. But what, what, in chapter 5, he says, I, verse 1, it is reported commonly that there is a fornication among you and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Christians. And we might well throw, let's throw it like that. That one should have his father's wife. You doing stuff that they wouldn't even tolerate. They will throw you out the Christian church. You'll be thrown out and not going to be able to come back. But you want to do wickedness before Yahweh. So, that, so, so his name can be blasphemed among the Gentiles, among the other nations. If they see you talking about you Israelite. I'm a Jew. What kind of Jew are you? Mm -hmm. Isn't that what I did? Well, that's what they did. Yeah. See, but now we're under the dispensation of the shed. You're going to be under the blood now. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And you still, do you, do you have any fear for Yah or his son? Mm -hmm. Where does it stop, El? Where does it stop, B? Mm -hmm. But, you know, we still, man, we know we're flesh. Mm -hmm. We're prone to sin at a time. Mm -hmm. But we still should be striving, right? Correct, that's right. For Ashley, right? But it, but it, but it, but it, but it, you see, it's like you say, Elder, if you're around brothers who encourage you and keep you accountable, if you have an accountability partner, mm. see, so like we, we have to keep one another accountable. Now, if I, if, if I, I'm doing dirt, and I know you're doing dirt, I don't want to, I don't want you to correct me on my dirt. Well, I'm just not gonna say, see, so these are the games that you play. Teach, brother, we so around, you know, and then we surround ourselves with. We get in a clique or a crew, mm. and, we, and, and then we have the same mind. And ain't nobody nobody's thinking. Nobody's thinking. There's no thinking involved in that. That just that can come. That comes automatic. That just goes on autopilot. That you just do that. You do what the crowd do. You see, crowd behavior is something that you know. Oh. You take the time to read, and you'll see that these are, uh, these are things that these people study. There's oh, detailed man. books written on the, the behavior of crowds and how people move and how to manipulate. And what to use them in it? They know the problems. Exactly. What to push? Which button? At what time to get you to move, move a certain way? The crowd going this way, and they're going to respond to it. And 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 our enemies are light years ahead of us. Little do we know. Light years. Yes, sir. So 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 Deacon, when you said that, I'm glad that's a very interesting concept to bring up because we know when they brought our Adam and they they got sure before the people they hadn't set up. You want to let him go? Hmm. Who you want? Barabbas mm. or him? Uh, it's the law of the, we'll let one go for the people. Mm. Who you want? The crowd said that. They out there said, no, Barabbas, Barabbas. And got the crowd hyped up. And they said, no, give us Barabbas. Do away with him. Crucify him. That's the crowd, right? That was the crowd. And the, and the I like what you put that. You know that they said that the, the leaders already agreed. If anybody confesses, they gonna be put out of church. That was the worst thing that could happen to you. Mm -hmm. Throw it out the whole church. Isn't it the same thing going on today? Oh, yeah. You gotta go. But, but you know what, man? You know you gotta get out of here. My elder. Where am I gonna go? You said some things, mm -hmm. and um, I'm just looking. I'm just what? trying to what? compare. I'm listening. Both things that you have said when right. you were in the Christian church. Yes, sir. And now you come in this. So, you know, Hebrew Israelite thing, not knowing who you were, you know, at That's first. Right. That's right. And um, you are, you have seen more bad things happen in the Hebrew Israelite church more than the Christian church. But guess what? You never switch back to the Christian church. So it must be something else. It's the truth. It's the truth. <laughs> you have to believe. That's what I want to say. Praise you have no truth, Yahweh. Yeah, we have revealed the truth to you and to all of us. Still the truth. So when we speak among our it's for all of us. So I'm saying, that's it. You're right. You're stealing it. I'm still the truth. The truth. The good. Find the good. The good. Bad the good. The bad. The bad and ugly. Okay. <laughs> but that's all right. But that's oh, the truth. Man. The truth Where is, is the truth. I can't walk away from the truth. You cannot walk away from it. Right. No, get on with the truth. Now Come you on. might, like you said, uh, it might be using the law unrighteously, mm -hmm. but I can't walk away from the truth. I'm yeah, glad thank you for bringing that up. This is the truth. This book, I could once he showed me the understanding of this book, mm -hmm. I got something to measure myself by. Mm -hmm. Fine. Break down. Break down. Mm -hmm. 
Finally, uh, then go to Galatians chapter five. So we see that that eleven, that eleven, we got to have a different. Uh, he, he laid it out in First Corinthians, right? The eleven, mm -hmm. that's that sin. But we need to put away all those the, the sinful things, the filthy things that we got caught up in. You're always willing to forgive us, right? Yes, sir. Let's do it. Praise mm -hmm. God. Let's confess it. Let's lead that. Let's reconcile. Let's do what we got to do. Uh, that's a process. Mm. You said it earlier. We sin. You got before you come to that altar with that gift, that sacrifice. You, you got some problems. Reconcile with your brother and sister first. Because in your mind, you know what's going on. Y'all always want you to be right. If you can't get to them, you better talk to Yahweh about it and work it out. So we, he, he wants us to be what? Be ye what? Holy. As I am holy. Praise yeah. But you got to know what, what that means. We got a comment on it. What's that? that? We have to be the church, not plain church. Mm. That's what that is. That's, that's what our people do. They plain church. Yeah, plain church. Gather up, go through the process, and you leave out and come in one way and leave out the same way. Ain't nobody, mm -hmm. ain't got nothing. See, y'all ain't let that stuff stay. No growth. No growth. Something yeah. wrong? You right? Where you gonna be uh, uh, let's start in um, uh, I said one. We're in the book of Galatians, chapter five, verse one. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith the Mashiach hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. That's right. Behold. I Saul say unto you that if you be circumcised, the, Mas the Mashiach shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. The Mashiach is become of no effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law. You are fallen from grace. I'm a Jew. I got circumcised the eighth day. I'm in this thing. Mm -hmm. What you say, Ellen? What say, did you? Uh, we, Jews was what? Jews was called and, 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 and we the flesh. This thing can't work without us. Yahweh can't do nothing without us. I'm Israel. I'm circumcised. I'm the law. What are you, what are you <laughs> talking about, man? Mm -hmm. No, but he's saying, wait a minute now. If you keep, if you're circumcised, well, you, you got, you got, you should walk right in this law, right? Mm -hmm. Your nationality ain't gonna do you no effect, right? All right. Yes, sir. Verse 5. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. That's the distinction. The right. Spirit. Yahshua, all things point to Yahshua Mashiach. It's the spiritual application of the law now. Through him. So now he's magnified the law. He has fulfilled the law to go to the next level of the spiritual thing. You just can't get it by by doing I, okay, I got so I, my, my parents circumcised me. Uh, I've done this. I got the law. Okay, I've done all these different things. Well, that's your duty. What, what you got to do next? Right? What's next? Go ahead. Yes, sir. For in Yahshua HaMashiach, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. You did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Uh oh, uh oh, here we go again. A little leaven, a little sin, a little false doctrine. You don't got somebody telling you something, but you haven't weighed the what? Weighed it by the law. Mm -hmm. You feel me? We're not gonna tell a brother not to take the sacrament or, or well, I ain't circumcised. Mm -hmm. Look, man, you washed up. Don't you hey? That don't get you to the hump, right? What gets you over the hump is the circumcision of your heart. That's right, yeah. The spirit. That's right, yeah. That's what gets you over the hump. That's what pleases Yahweh. Come on. Verse 10. I have confidence in you through the other day that you will, that you will be none otherwise minded. But he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, <laughs> whosoever he be. Right. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the, of the torture state 
See? He said, like, I'm not teaching against keeping the laws of that's given to our fathers. I'm not preaching against the circumcision. I'm a Jew. I'm of the house of well, I'm of the tribe of Benjamin. Mm -hmm. right. I'm born of a Jew. I'm born in a noble house. Mm -hmm. Then we want to talk about this. Let's get the pedigree, Paul said. Okay? Uh, and then according to the law, I, I was too, who, who was he talking about? Gabriel. Gabriel. Mm -hmm. And then of the what? The sect. I'm of the Pharisees, mm -hmm. the most strictest sect. I know this law. Mm -hmm. I've been taught well. So I'm not going against the law, but I'm telling you now, Yahshua Mashiach is that Messiah. He is that one that Moshe talked about mm -hmm. and the prophets talked about. Mm -hmm. So through him, he is our sacrifice now. That's he right. is our Passover. We don't have to do certain things. We don't have to do those kind of sacrifices in that way anymore. Mm -hmm. Because he, everything's on him now. Right? Praise God. Praise God. Verse 12. I would they were even cut off which trouble you. For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve mm. one another. Praise mm. God. Don't get up in that playing game. Right. Don't be using the liberty through the grace of Yahshua HaMashiach so you can play games. Thanks. What you just said, playing games. Well, you know, uh, you forgive me. Well, man, don't do that. It's not that. It's not for that. Mm -hmm. That liberty is saying, dealing with those coverings, you're not under those sacrificial things no more. Mm -hmm. And now there should be a better, a better understanding, right, Elf? That's right. About uh, the spiritual things, mm -hmm. the, the weightier matters of the law, right? We always mm -hmm. talk about. Right? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. right? Yes, sir. Praise God. Verse 14, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Mm -hmm. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed of one another. See there, so when you see that kind of environment going on, it's telling you that carnal carnality is ruling that thing. Mm -hmm. Okay? Let's continue. Yes, sir. Finish it up to 26. Yes, sir. I, this I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Ah, walk in the spirit of this law, mm -hmm. and you shall not fulfill the spirit of the flesh. Not just fornication, all those things, hatred, malice, right. envy. Mm -hmm. those, are, those are the, those are the uh, fruits of the, of the lust of the flesh, right? That's right. Those are we talking about, all those things. Go ahead. I mean, don't, don't talk to the Romans that um, the Lord spirit. Exactly, exactly. Okay. And we're going to hit this. The law is spiritual. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see soon uh, the, 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 the fruits of the Spirit in this challenge. Mm -hmm. Verse 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the one. Can, so that you cannot do the things that you would. Mm -hmm. But if you be led by the Spirit, I'm sorry, verse 18, but if you be led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. Right, you're not under that law of the animal sacrifice. You're not okay. under that as your covering. You're under the Spirit of Yahshua HaMashiach, under that, under that covering. Mm -hmm. And you can go to, I think, uh, Romans 8 talks about that more. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Stephen. And don't show us love to take this verse. Oh, oh, run, man. Get it on the interstate. <laughs> oh, man. Whoa. CNN. 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 <laughs> Just fly around the world with it. Hmm. Verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Right. Get them. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, hatred. variance, emulations, Strife, I'm sorry, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, rebellions, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in the time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of Elohim. Can you read that again? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And I'm sorry, where are you going to start? Yeah, look, at 21. Yes, I'll sir. just wrap up there again. Latter part of verse 21. As I have told you in time past, 
that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of Elohim. So don't deceive yourself when you're seeing these things going on. You, you may find yourself, you're in, you're in peril mm. of being cut off if you already set up. You know, we don't want it. We want that, but we want to warn the people, those of them that are in this way. We can't continue to walk in the what he says that he just laid out. Now the works, the works of the flesh. You're giving over to the flesh to do these things, so they have works too. Mm -hmm. So now you're in that 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 uh, garden. Yahshua is the is the uh, uh, Yahshua is the true vine. Mm -hmm. But now you are working in another uh, uh, in another place. Mm -hmm. You're working in the garden of evil over here somewhere. Mm -hmm. So you can't be with Yahweh. So you're doing, you, you got too many works of these things. You're lying, you're unclean, you're committing adultery, idolatry, and all these different things. And now that's, that's not of Yahweh. But what is, what, what is of Yahweh? Verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are the Mashiachs have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Hallelujah, praise, hallelujah. Praise, yeah, praise. And um, that's, that's, uh, that, that's all I have mm. right now, my brothers. Uh, for this feast of unleavened bread, let us cast away that old leaven uh, sin. Let's get that out, so we can we can walk in the spirit of um, of love and the fruit of the, the fruit of the spirit, as it, as Paul says best: love, joy, that peace, that long suffering, that gentleness, good faith, goodness and faith, being meek, humble, temperance. Against such there is no law. So let us put our mind on that um, as we uh, enjoy this Sabbath, this Feast of Unleavened Bread, that we are able to reflect on those things that have hindered us, my deacon, mm -hmm. uh, those things that may get in our way, that we ask Yahweh, that we sincerely seek Yahweh to help us um, prune those things from our hearts right. so that they're not going to get in the way, so our hearts can be fleshly. A circumcised heart in the flesh, so we can do those things that are going to be appealing to y'all with that, that bring forth a meat as, as you say, uh, uh, su sufficient to repentance. And uh, so we can walk, you know, so that people can see us when they see, they can say, Now, that that, that woman, right, that's a daughter of Zion, that brother, oh, yeah, he's in that way. Oh, yeah, he's a, he's a, he's an Israelite, he's what they call themselves. That those are titles so when they see you that they're in that way. All right, so praise y'all with that. I'm gonna just stop right there, and I'm gonna turn it over to the elder and the deacon for any comments, um, anything they want to say regarding um, this uh, Sabbath and new, the Sabbath and unleavened um, class discussion. Elder Ross, praise God. Um, my elder, you have said it all, and the only thing maybe I can say it starts at home. You know, start exercising all these things that we have outlined, you know, through this body at home and extend it to um, outward, out of your home. You know, so Yahweh can continue to bless us. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah, you can that. That's all I love. Yeah, praise God. You know, praise God for all the family that came out. And like my other say, in Jamaica, we have a saying, they say, uh, dance a yard before you, uh, God, dance a yard before you dance abroad. That's correct. Dance at home. Do like if you don't practice these things at home, how are you gonna do it out? Mm -hmm. Well, how can you go clean someone out when you don't clean no house? Amen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Come, on. Come on, come on, Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So praise God with that. Uh uh Deacon, any other announcements? Uh I know you like to uh, I want you to make sure you cover any other announcement that you want. Oh you yeah. Know, yeah, well, tomorrow we have our piece of first fruits. Yeah. Um, I believe we'll be at my other house. You yeah, have will. Yeah, yeah, as well. We'll be virtual there. Yeah. Okay, great job. But um, yeah, I will. The, um, also, if anyone would like to receive their baptism, of course, you know, you can reach out to us and um, contact us on Facebook or speak to us directly, and yeah. we can take care of that business. We'll be all allowed. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Great.
Praise Yah. Praise Yah. Praise Yah. And if you need information, if you need um, inspiration, you can always speak to your neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they're gonna know my address one way or the other. <laughs> yeah. Praise God. Praise, praise God. God. Praise God. I like to just give Yahweh the glory. And I think we can and we all of us can just praise Yahweh tonight for being here and being here. Yahweh for blessing us to have the, the, the opportunity to, to be at this location. You know, and, and I think we said this earlier, we talked about it, well, we have a list to be. Yahweh has provided mm, everything. Yeah. Everything that this ministry needed. He has get provided for us. We've got to say thank you to Yah in Yahshua's name. Because we didn't we haven't struggled in any sense. You know, he just made it, he just made it. He made it clear. He brought us together, and he's given us to give us that vision. He, he brought us together. Okay, you do it this way. Well, how are we going to do these classes? How are we going to well, uh, start from the beginning, book of Genesis, <laughs> <laughs> and go? That was, here we are. Praise God. He will take over. He take over. Mm -hmm. So it's a blessing. I'm just glad to be here, and I'm glad to uh, again, like the, uh, uh, echoing what the elder deacon said. Thank you all for tuning in tonight. Um, and Shabbat Shalom uh, and enjoy your feast of the leaven bread. Remember, uh, if, you're, uh, if you're observing, you only need 11. Uh, and, and, and I hope that will, uh, if you have any questions later, you can send us an email or anything. All right? Praise y'all. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.